today's video. So, um, something interesting happened in uh, One Piece, the One Piece manga, specifically chapter 1079, which is the most recent chapter. And I want to talk about it. <laughs> it is a very funny development and it has stamped one of the funniest uh, fan made names for a character, and that is Useless Captain Kid. Now, if you know anything about One Piece, I'm hoping One Piece fans are the ones watching this because I'm, I don't plan on diving into the past of any of this. So, Yusuke Skin was delivered to us to be some type of rival to Luffy pre-time skip sometime in Sambodi Archipelago. I don't know how people pr pronounce that way. I say Sambodi. Some people say Shabondi. Like, I don't know. But yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So... The reason why he came across as the Luffy's rival was, I mean, we saw the interactions that the two had when they met. It wasn't particularly similar to Luffy and Blackbeard's if a similarity or yin-yang kind of polarity thing, north-south um, rivalry type thing. It was more of like, yeah, you and I are the same class, but I think I'm better than you. But no, um, I don't really care. It's so, it was a very interesting dynamic, but... but we find out that uh, Yusuke's kid among the dwarves generation, that was the Monica given to new kids who were cr creating ruckus in the world. He had the highest bounty. And then somewhere, then followed by Luffy and then goes on and on. But then somewhere along the line, we find out that, and I don't know if many of the One Piece fandom didn't particularly remember this, but we found out that Yusuke's kids bounty was that high because he was actually willing to commit atrocities so he was kidnapping people uh attacking civilians stuff like that so he was a pirate through and through not the uh romanticized version we have in luffy who is just uh, to be honest <laughs> a sailor <laughs> let's be honest he's kind of just a sailor who's going around causing mayhem but in recent times, where Luffy, Law, and then Kid I were in the same area, went through the whole Wano arc, we saw the way things are shaping, shaped out to be, that we realized that, okay, Kid was kind of used to this, but he, he's just all right. He, there was nothing particularly special about him. But now, in uh, episode, I mean, Maga chapter 10, 7, tonight, we realized that, and yo, we realized two things here. We realized that, Kid, Kid was just overhyped. And I don't know if it was an intentional overhype because, I mean, many people in the community feel like Oda doesn't like Kid. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I think that is a bit unfair to say to Oda. I don't think any um, writer or author dislikes a character they've created because each character serves a purpose. And I think the purpose of Kid was to show that, yeah, you have a 3 billion bounty, but... There's, there's levels to this. And as we saw in the reset chapter, I mean, if you haven't read a reset chapter, this is spoiler, moving on, spoiler territory. But uh, we see um, Eustace Kid being demolished in one move, like one shot from Shanks. And th that was it. He, he was done. So. Specifically, Shanks just shows us, I mean, what, to, what happens is just a brief rundown of what happened. Is basically, Kid shows up. He's looking for the man with the burned scars. He shows up to um, meet Shanks and their red hair pirates and their crew and the whole alliance. And Shanks has future sights, naturally, makes sense. And he sees that uh, uses Kid uses Punk Down, I believe, to cause quite a lot of aggro because we find out that the red hair pirate alliance not the his not his pirate crew but the alliance other people who have sworn to be under his banner they are not particularly strong so he realizes that okay no um kid if he allows kid to have his way he's going to cause a lot of mayhem and there will be a lot of collateral that base so then i mean his other crewmates were like you know we'll handle this and uh, shanks is like nah you know i got this i got this and he just attacks Kid and he uses Divine Departure, which is the move that um, Goldie Roger used against Odin. So it's one of Goldie Roger's node signature moves. And he just 
wipes the floor with the entire crew, kids crew. I mean, people were talking about Killer versus Zuru. Nah, nah, G, nah. I think right now we are getting confirmation that there's levels to this. And this is the reason why I think where kids loss actually made sense. Well, when we go into One Piece, pre-time skip, um, in the first part of, from East Blue into the Grand Line, the first part or half of the Grand Line, the thing of power, the show of power was Devil Fruit users. Like, everybody was worried about Devil Fruit users. That was like, they were the most problematic group of people in that world, in that part of the world. And it was like, if you had a devil fruit, you kind of had a cheat code and you were given a relatively higher bounty, too many things. So it was like devil fruit was the talk of the town. And you can see that in the way we wrote the story that during that period, we pre time skip. That was what was the Luffy and his crew had to contend with. There were certain times where they kind of contended with Haki, but at the time, we didn't know what it was called. I mean, if you go back to Nero's, um, uh, arc or the Skype arc to be specific, we hear about Mantra, which to be honest was just observation hacky to to be precise. Yeah. And we see that, but the main contention was devil fruits, devil fruit, devil fruit. But then as a great story or story and I mean as a great author, Oda had the new thing, the new power system trump the devil fruit thing which was hacky and we even had our protagonist luffy significantly lose to hacky i mean we saw the showcasings of hacky i mean even way before anero we saw it with shanks where he actually used hacky in the beginning but we didn't know what it was luffy displayed hacky when they went to shout the go ahead and talk shabondi uh for the first time and he did it to the ball like there were displays of these things but we never truly knew it's then uh i think it's benimaru shows up and they he basically kind of wipes the floor with uh with the pacifistas wipes the floor borsalino also shows up and it's like mayhem and then we kind of realized that, okay haki is a thing we didn't really get a good explanation of what haki was till luffy goes to the amazon really and then we find out what haki is and then we realize that, okay haki is a bigger player then it comes in and then so there's a progression. So after the time skip, we realized that the 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 power scaling was not just devil foods because they have now entered the new world. Because the new world territory strength lay in hacky because hacky could trump devil fruit users. So if you were a devil fruit user, it was in your best interest to learn hacky and merge it with your devil fruit abilities. So we have the straw hack crew, some of them learning hacky and then moving forward. And then in the beginning, it was largely observation hockey and armament hockey. They were the two big things when it came to hockey in the beginning part. So we talk about the Fishman Island and then we keep going and even all the way up to um, Dress Rosa. The conversation was more on strengthening your uh, observation hockey and then your armament hockey. Observation, not so much, but it was showcase but armament haki was really the thing and then we have luffy going gear fourth when he was fighting um do flamingo and that's where he built his devil fruits with his haki and it created a whole new thing and then we kept we kept pushing it and then we go to whole cake island i'm just skipping through we go to whole cake island and then we realize that okay okay there's more to observation haki that we thought and then future sites and we learned this from katakuri that is um Big Mom's oldest son, or uh, I'm not not oldest son. That's Perez Pero. Um, I guess the most powerful child of his, and the most powerful uh, commander, Katakuri, who has future sights, and Luffy had to learn it on the job. So we realized that just Amame Haki was not good enough. I needed he needed to boost his observation Haki, and that was a unique thing to him at the time. In the sense that that was a unique growth to him because yo, I was talking to some friends of mine during the period of Folky Guy, and I was like, yo, guys. Do you notice that we haven't had any Zoro content for like two years? I was like, yo, that is crazy. But yeah, so we keep pushing it. Then we go to Wano and then we know what happens with Wano where we realize that, yo, Observation Haki, Future Sight is great. Armament Haki has a level two, which is where you kind of emit it 
And then during the fight against Kaido, Luffy figures out that, oh, okay, if I can do this with Armament Haki, why can't I do it with um, Congress Haki? So this is, with this illustration, you realize that during the Wano fight, Kid and Law's fight against Big Mom was not a battle of Haki. No, it, it never was a battle of Congress Haki to be specific. Because what happened was that, thankfully, Law's awakening, his ability, some of his abilities in his uh, Opi Opi no Mi, where internal attacked Big Mom internally, which made her take a lot of damage. While um, the kid had moves that also made her take damage, but there were more brute force physical type hits, like the punk down, I believe that's what it's called. So it's you you realize that kid and law didn't particularly have a fight of conqueror's hack. It didn't really have a showcase of that type of thing. I mean, even Zoro had more Congress hockey type fights than um, Law and Kid. So right now, after all of this, when um, Kid shows up to Shanks, who we know from SBSs and other forms of information is a hacky master, I don't know how anybody thought it was going to go that any other way because when the first time we saw shanks in terms of like past luffy's childhood when he went to meet white beard we realized that he had this thing even white beard talked about it that yo put it tap like uh, nozzle your congress hockey man you're putting my cool you're knocking them out so it was a thing he likes to showcase oh, so when i read that oh that was gonna happen i was like oh bet congress hockey showcase and i was like but kid doesn't really have any type of feats to do with Congress hacking and mission and stuff like that. So what happened happened. And for me, it makes perfect sense because Kid in, in, in the field of play that Kid finds himself now, that Luffy finds himself now, it is a battle of the strongest will. It's the battle of kings. Right now we are done with all the um underlings that is the battle of kings. He's fighting admirals, potentially Gorosei, Yonko's like these are the people who's contending with people who actually actively and actually want to rule that world or are ruling that world. So it's not a showcase of my Amamed Haki is good or that my Devil Fruits is kind of cool. I mean, the question of Kid being at the, in, in, his ineptitude with his Devil Fruits is a totally different conversation because that's how the character is styled. I mean, many of my friends and I discussed that if Yusuke's Kid was an engineer, his abilities he would use his devil fruits way better imagine if um frankie had that devil fruit he he might be quite ob but at the end of the day all i wanted to say is that kid hasn't shoot hadn't showcased any level of congress hockey feats or even hadn't even come to terms or understood that he could emit his congress hockey in fights then he was going to show potential one of the masters of hockey and yeah, that, that was all going to happen. So what I am looking forward to is Luffy and Shanks meeting. And I know I am hoping that they don't meet with Luffy running away as side thing. I hope it's like they've, whoever is chasing them, they've given them a huge gap and then they can take a breather. And when they meet Shanks, I know for sure that scene is going to be epic because it's just going to be a clash of Congress Haki. And also it would be a very good way for us to understand what's special about the Straw Hats crew and where they are because when the Haki is being given, the Congress Haki is being given off, we get to see which of the Straw Hats are going to pass out. And then we get to see which of the Redhead Pirates are going to pass out with Luffy's Congress Haki. So all in all, yeah, I guess the name Useless Captain Kid is pretty effective. He's not useless because he's a prop punt. But he's useless because the hype, he didn't make the hype. So uh, if you guys want more One Piece content, let me know in the comment section. Um, as always, tell me what you think. Let me know what your thoughts are about the whole <laughs> kid versus uh, Shanks thing. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Real Prosh. Peace.